Hi there, I am Andre and I am presenting our work accepted in the main track of the AAAI conference in artificial intelligence. From the title, we see that our work is concerned with small sample tabular biomedical datasets. We propose a neural architecture which also performs feature selection. In this talk, I'll walk you through the motivation of the work then discuss the actual proposed method and then talk about some experiments including the accuracy, the training behavior and some ablations. Our work is motivated by the desire to use AI systems for medical diagnosis. There has been some positive recent news which show that AI systems could be successfully used at detecting breast cancer, but in reality the story was different and the models did not generalize well. One of the problems is that current ML systems are designed for large datasets. So they assume that there is a large training data. And in reality, uh, acquiring large datasets is very hard. And this is especially true in experimental sciences such as medicine, bioinformatics and drug discovery. And this is profoundly true in early stage clinical trials. Usually, the resulting datasets are tabular, which means that they are tables of data, for example, gene expressions. And those tables have some characteristics. They are usually small sample size, which means that there are very few samples in the order of 100 to 200 samples and they are very high dimensional so they are 50 to 100 times more features than there are samples. Visually the tabular data sets look like this where there are only a handful of samples and very many features. From a machine learning perspective modern methods frequently overfit on such high dimensional data. In this paper, we propose a neural architecture which is specialized for the case of small sample and high dimensional tabular datasets. We'll show that our method has great predictive accuracy and it reduces overfitting while performing global feature selection. Now, our method is also available on Archive and you can scan the QR code on the right. I'll start by presenting the intuition of the method and then I'll discuss the actual method. Now we start from the observation that a standard feed forward network, so on the right we have an MLP, just, just a sequence of linear layers, and the observation is that on high dimensional data, so the number of features is very large, most learnable parameters are part of the input layer. So let's consider a case where the input is 5000 dimensional and the hidden layer size is 100. Then the first layer will be 5000 times 100 weights and then the following layer would be 100 times 100 weights. In that case the first layer has 50 times more learnable parameters than the next layers which implies that essentially 95, 97, 98% of the parameters are in the first layer. And the key observation, the key idea of our method is that rather than learning those parameters, we want to predict those parameters. So we don't directly learn them, but instead we predict them. How? Well, on the right, we have the same standard fit for all network and on the left we have the mechanism that we propose. It is a general mechanism and the output is the matrix of the first layer. So we are predicting this matrix. Now the first step is to compute some feature embeddings. So for every feature, if we have 5000 features for each one of them, we compute some feature embeddings. Now these embeddings are computed from the same tabular data set. We don't require any external data. You can use any standard method like uh, singular value decomposition. Then we use two very tiny 
auxiliary networks. One is a weight predictor network and one is a sparsity network. Notice that the sparsity network has a sigmoid activation, so it is going to output a scalar between 0 and 1, while the weight predictor network outputs a vector. The size of the vector is the same size as the first hidden layer. And the steps are that we take every feature and we take the feature embedding and input it simultaneously through the weight predictor network and to the sparsity network. The outputs of those networks are multiplied and this, the resulting vector is put into the column of the weight matrix. So we take the first feature embedding, transform it, put it in the first column. Second feature embedding, transform it, putting into the second column. The intuition is that, for example, the second column represents the connection of the second feature with the following hidden neurons. This method is end-to-end -end trained. In terms of the loss on top of the standard cross entropy, we add a sparsity loss. It's a very simple loss in which we just add the outputs of the sparsity network. The sparsity network, the scalar that it outputs, can be interpreted as a feature importance. So if the number is zero, the feature is not important. If the output is one, then the feature is very important. By having this number, zero, for example, the weights get multiplied by zero, which means that they become zero, which implies that all the connections to a feature are zero, and implicitly this is equivalent to dropping this feature. So by having zero feature importances, we drop features. And by having feature importances equal to one, we preserve the feature. Now the sparsity loss simply adds a summation of all those feature importances across all feature embeddings. This loss is differentiable because the these feature importances are always positive and they can't be zero because it is a sigmoid activation. Intuitively, we incentivize the outputs of the sparsity network, which means the feature importances, to be zero for most features. I'm attaching the pseudocode of the method for those interested in stopping, but it's not important, so I'm going to skip it. Let's talk about the experiments. We compare our method with 10 different methods, both standard and modern methods, across nine different datasets, classification tasks. We compute the balanced accuracy, and because we work with small data sets, we perform fivefold cross validation and we repeat this five times. So we have a total of 25 runs across nine data sets. Now we compute the average rank of each method. So for every data set, we rank the methods, where rank one means it's the best method on that data set. And then for each method, we average those ranks. So we see that our method performs best because a smaller rank means that the method has higher accuracy. Notice that our method outperforms standard methods like a random forest or a gradient boosting tree or even an MLP, as well as modern methods such as a tabnet or a concrete autoencoder. We attribute the performance increase to the training behavior of our method. And we see that our method has less overfitting than an equivalent MLP. In this graph, we show the losses, both the training and the validation loss as the training progresses. And notice that for a standard MLP, which is in red, the training loss decreases as training increases while the validation loss increases after some point, which means that after this point, the MLP overfits. Contrary, our method decreases the validation loss for a longer period, which means that it starts overfitting after a um, later point. If we compare the validation curves, we see that our method obtains a lower validation, 
which means a better performance. But overall, we notice that our method overfits at a later point, which is always a good sign. Our method performs global feature selection and the sparsity loss is a mechanism which incentivizes that. Without the sparsity loss, we notice that already our method uses only 25% of the features. And by increasing the sparsity hyperparameter, we notice that across datasets, the number of selected features drops from 25% to about 1%, while incurring insignificant performance loss. In practice, it means that one can understand which features are important for the tasks, by using a higher sparsity loss and analyzing the features post hoc. We noticed some good qualitative results with the feature importances. We looked at easy tasks and at hard tasks, and we briefly defined the easy task as task on which our method has very high accuracy, and hard task as those tasks on which our method has very low accuracy. Notice on the easy task, so when the method actually performs well, the feature importances are almost binary. So our method can clearly say that some features are useful and some features are not useful. While on the hard task, our method is unsure which features are actually important and it assigns a 0.5 feature importance, so it doesn't know. We believe that this is great because on the task when the method doesn't perform well, uh, it should not have high confidence in the selected features. We performed some ablations into the method. And firstly, we looked at the importance of the sparsity network. We found that it always, across datasets, improves the accuracy. And we compare two models. So we take the actual model with a sparsity network and we take an identical model, but without the sparsity network. And we see that across datasets, adding the sparsity network improves performance. We perform this experiment without the sparsity loss. So by further tuning the sparsity loss, the performance can only increase. We did a same ablation with the weight predictor network. And we find that across most datasets, the weight predictor network improves performance. In some tasks, such as this TCG task, it adds 10% test accuracy, which is quite significant. While on other tasks, it reduces the performance. We also perform an ablation on the feature embeddings. And we tried four different feature embeddings. One of them is a standard singular value decomposition, and the other one is a non negative matrix factorizations, while the other two are more histogram based feature embeddings. The details are unimportant. The point is that the feature embedding uh, significantly affects the performance of the method. And we found that um, matrix factorization based, so for example, NMF and SVD, perform best across tasks. In summary, we propose a novel neural architecture which is specialized for small sample and high dimensional tabular datasets. Those are usually in biomedical tasks. We show that our method has great predictive accuracy, it reduces overfitting, while simultaneously performing global feature selection and enabling the analysis of those features. For any questions, please reach out. Thank you for watching.